autopilot or consciousness. This becomes your choice, is what do you want to be? Do you want to be on autopilot where you don't really have to make any effort and it takes no strain or personal effort to get to where you are? Or do you want to become conscious, which actually requires you to be aware of all of the things that you do? And people do tend to remain in autopilot unless the pain is too great. Then they seek some source to take them out of the pain. Not necessarily consciousness, but some source. It could be a busyness, it could be an activity, it could be an addiction, it could be a class, it could be a session, it could be anything. Take me out of my perceived pain so that I may go back into unconsciousness and live on autopilot without noticing pain. This would be the model or the metaphor to the movie The Matrix, where, they, where the guy wanted to go back and just eat steak and forget about all this other consciousness. Consciousness does truly cure everything, but not everybody wants the cure. They really just want pain relief. So there's a difference between pain relief and cure. If you want the cure, you have to become conscious. In order to become conscious, you have to decidedly choose to come out of your unconscious autopilot states on a regular, daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis until you create a consistent connection of moments of consciousness that now become a stream of conscious awareness as opposed to unconscious autopilot realities. This possibility or potential can only come about if you, the individual, actually say, I choose to become conscious and I am willing to do anything it takes to become conscious and aware. That's the only time it's possible to connect those moments into a life stream of conscious awareness. Otherwise, the typical person remains in unconscious autopilot, basically means that you're operating by your patterns, until there is perceived pain that drives them to look for some alternate reality. And typically, the alternate reality they look for are some sort of, we'll call it medication, we'll call it addiction, uh, a session, a treatment, something that releases that pain to diminish it enough so that I'm back into the acceptable norm range of pain and strife or challenge so that I can go back into unconsciousness and just move about the world unconsciously in my autopilot not really directing my life or not really being conscious of how my unconscious state creates my life. Another understanding of that is to say that when I am unconscious and in autopilot, I am in a hypnotic state. That hypnotic state is based on my belief systems and patterns that create a reality that I believe is real. And if I do not question those realities, I remain in an unconsciously numb, seemingly pain-free reality. But really all that's happened is that I've accepted the amount of pain that occurs in that as norm and have no real urge to change it unless it exceeds my norm pain levels. This is common and typical. And then anyone who learns things and gets some conscious information, like reads books, takes classes, etc., now all of a sudden they're armed with this information so that in their unconscious autopilot realities, they may use that information to justify their reality, to blame others, to avoid their pain and find a mental understanding to not be conscious, and they use that knowledge to support and sustain their unconscious autopilot reality. Because any time 
they push toward a conscious reality, there's pain. Why? Because in moving toward a conscious reality, the unconscious has to change. So it's like exercising muscles you haven't used for 10 years. It's going to hurt. But the hurt is seemed as pain, so the autopilot that says let's eliminate the pain now begins to eliminate the consciousness because it's creating pain. That is then often interpreted as death, the end of a life, uh, impending doom, some sort of suffering, or that this is wrong. And it doesn't recognize that the exercising of flaccid muscles that have been sitting for 10 years is going to be painful until you get into a toned-up state. Basically saying that moving from unconscious to consciousness is perceived as painful from the unconscious autopilot state. But once conscious, it's no longer perceived of or experienced as pain. But not many people can move through that, that state that moves from unconscious to conscious because they buy into the pain and the changing of the realities as being something awful. So they remain in unconscious autopilot. Except for those that are educated or read or experienced enough to be dangerous, they then have glimmers of this consciousness, pull that information back into their unconscious autopilot, and thereby justify their sustained unconscious autopilot reality with some conscious information, but never being courageous enough to move fully into consciousness because of losses and attachments and identities that they hold within themselves. And then those states interfere with all relationships because anything that anyone does is interpreted through the unconscious autopilot and all of its programs. And anybody who comes from outside their autopilot in, the, in this case, might have a different opinion that causes them to question their unconscious identity autopilot, are seen as threats, as not understanding them, as dangerous to their reality, creating them in a state of wrongness, or uh, less than, or envy, or any other of those lower emotions. And therefore, they either push against them, fight them, reject them, shut them off, or they try and convince them how my unconscious reality is the truth and can't you believe this with me to live in this reality with me rather than me become conscious and look at what information you have brought outside of my reality that may change my awareness. And all of this continually occurring till you, the individual, say, I want change above all else. I no longer fear my pain. I no longer fear the change of my reality. I no longer fear the change of my identity. And I want consciousness and the truth above all else. Not my limited truth, not a truth that supports my reality but a greater scope of truth than I am at this point aware of. And when I have made that decision as an individual, then and only then does my real change begin to take place. And as that takes place, all of the stages of wanting to stretch a little bit, having a moment of truth, and then having a moment of unconsciousness, all the seesaw keeps going until you extend into connected moments of consciousness that become a stream of conscious awareness in your reality as opposed to momentary glimpses that I bring back into my unconscious reality and then support my belief systems with. I must work at my own change. There is no one who can relieve the pain for me accept me. The most anyone could do would be to give me an Advil or an aspirin that will temporarily relieve my 
pain or perceived pain, but the pain will always return until you link up that consciousness into a life stream of conscious awareness where there is no pain any longer because you're aware that you are the creator of your reality and all of your experience. And you have taken your personal power and authority of my own creating, my own existence, and my own realities, and consciously being aware of that. That is the only answer to all pain, suffering, and challenges. So it boils down to now, what do you as the individual choose for your experience? Unconscious autopilot with markers of pain or consciousness and creatorship. Some people think that in that limited reality, unconscious autopilot, that they are actually creating. The fact is, is that you are only modifiers of that limited reality. Because imagine that that limited unconscious reality has certain parameters and belief systems. There's nothing beyond that. So all you can do is modify your experience within that unconscious limited reality. And you, from that consciousness, can say you're creating. But from another awareness, you need to understand that you are not creating at all. There is no creation in a limited unconscious reality. There is at best a modification that makes the limited reality look different, thereby the individual believes that they are creating. But because they're in that limited reality, they unconsciously know that there is a boundary to their creation or modification, and they always feel limited and always feel trapped. Unless they are swimming in unconsciousness and believe that, oh, I'm creating, I'm creating, but really all they're doing is creating the same stuff over and it's called recycling. They are recycling the same old experiences of any past over and over with a different look, a different face, different people, different places, and thinking that they have created, but they have not, they have only recycled. What do you as the individual choose for your experience? Unconscious autopilot with markers of pain or consciousness and creatorship.